Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat episode 298, featuring the second installment of my interview with Mr. <laughs> Dr. Rather, uh, Richard Bartle, the co-creator of MUD, the father of the MMORPG. This part of the interview, we talk about a lot of topics, but mostly the role of gender and uh, what gender, uh, what role gender plays in these sorts of experiences, the virtual worlds, the uh, men playing women, women playing men, and, and <laughs> who knows what other combinations. Anyway, a lot of great stuff here. So without further ado, here is Dr. Richard Bartle. Oh, role playing. Oh, yes, oh, role, yes, playing. role playing. Yes, yes. Uh, well, yeah. Well, <laughs> you're totally distracted kind of... by those cufflinks. Yeah. That's all... <laughs> yeah, ah, yes, those cufflinks. Whoa. Hey. Um, so yeah, the the role playing thing. So you've got the like the fixed role playing where the role doesn't have much give in it and the actor has to manipulate themselves into the role and play the role and take on the role. But what we have with MMOs is, is a soft role playing. So you say, um, what role am I going to play? And then you envisage one here, say, and then this is the real you. And you think, okay, well, I'll try to play that role play this role so you try and play the role and, uh, and so you might go off in a different direction you, and you might adjust the role accordingly but the more you play the closer you and your character in the game get together and if you play long enough you become your character you're actually in the world and you're you're immersed your you and your persona are one um the way i've just described it there is um, the typical way that, that you do it if, if you're a male player, female players tend to play the, um, further ahead. So they just go, um, rather than extreme opposite and come at it like that, they're more um, just ahead of it and then they're tracking and then closing up and catching up with their pursuit. So um, that's just an observation. And um, since it mentions genders, I'm probably guilty of all kinds of sexism there, for which I apologise. However... That is, it's just something that I've I've noticed over the years. Um, whether it's nature, nurture, or my bad observation, I don't know. Um, but it would explain why you get um, only about five percent women playing. F well, it wouldn't explain it. It would, um, it, it would be um, supported by the fact that only about five, maybe ten percent of women play. Uh, male characters whereas about 40 percent of males play female characters because you know that's opposite um rather than nearly you but not quite so ooh, like i'm casting spells ooh. that's one of the things i miss most about muds because that's what i started off playing and then i moved on to uh, world mm. of warcraft and games like that later but it mm. just seems there was so much more socializing you know, in the in the muds. I mean, and I had some really people I considered to be really close friends who never met in real life, just just you know strictly over the mud. And I've never, you know, experienced anything like that on the playing something like uh, World of Warcraft. I bring my real life friends into play, but you know, I don't make those kind of relationships in that style of game for whatever reason. Yes, well, uh, with with muds, what you see on the screen, the, um, the text is the same as what you're typing in. So it, there's no change of modality. Your commands and everything you're typing is the same modality as what you're seeing. So it's easy. Where, um, but in a, an MMO, um, you, you're typically mouse, one hand, WSD. You've got to hit return, start typing something, uh, off it goes. Or you're on the um, voice over IP thing, in which case you still sound just like you did. Uh, so... Oh, yes. You're American, are you? Yeah, yes. Okay, well, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, you, you start to worry, don't you? No, well, obviously I don't because I'm not American. But um, but the, um, the the whole voice over IP, I mean, it brings reality in. And, and you're, you're, if you're trying to get away from reality, then why would you come in? I'm, I'm looking forward to when we've got proper voice fonts so that you can uh, just... I speak and it gets converted into phonemes and the phonemes are reconverted back using a, a, fo a voice font so that I sound as if I really am um, 
you know, a troll or whatever that I'm playing. Not that that would please other people, but still. Mm. It's sort of interesting. We were talking uh, talking a little bit about gender mm-hmm. and the, the men playing female characters. And I noticed there's a certain character from the original MUD that comes up a lot on the, your, your website, a, a certain Sue. Oh, yes. Uh, the Sue witch. Thomas, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, this character? Sue, yes, Sue the Witch. Yes, um, she was the. Um, she used to play all night. Really, one of those start at midnight, log off at six o'clock in the morning things, um, using what was called a midnight line, because telephone charges were really expensive in the UK back then. Um, it, it was per minute, and it was extraordinarily expensive. Like it. it uh, we, uh, when I was a university lecturer, I wasn't allowed to make phone calls before 11 a.m. because they were so expensive. Um, but there was this thing you could buy. You paid something like £140 and you got three months of unlimited phone time between midnight and 6 a.m., which was when our computer at the university was open up. So lots of people would would get these and come in. Yeah, and Sue was there. She was a witch. Everyone liked Sue. She was... Um, really good and um she would she'd send people letters real life letters handwritten like I mean, one of my friends got one 109 pages long handwritten 109 pages and you get all these photos she'd send photos you go, <laughs> she'd go on about for 109 pages well good good you think i'm going to read 109 pages of girl writing no <laughs> um so uh, but but yeah, and and, and um, she sent photos out. And some of them looked like you know, like they could have been different people. You know, um, the, the makeup was uh, was different and stuff. And she lived in South Wales. And then one day, um, she um, said, "I'm going to be an au pair in Sweden or somewhere, and uh, I'm going. Goodbye." And people thought that was a bit blunt. Never said anything about that before. What's going on? So a bunch of them got into a van, drove off to South Wales, knocked on the door um, of the address they'd been writing the letters to, and this woman answers and says, ah, you better come in. Turns out uh, Sue's real name is Steve and has just been defrauded, uh, just been arrested for um, defrauding the Department of Transport out of £60,000. So um, that was quite a shock to most of us um, because uh, we'd never come across this before now as it happened i i had thought um i wonder if this sue really is a sue but um when you did um like made um probes and things you know things like um asking questions which uh you'd get different responses from if it was a if it was a, a man or a woman um and when i don't say not in terms of knowledge things like um typing speed um it, men would tend to respond quicker um because they don't didn't think think um you know the first thing that comes into their head whereas the, the female players that we knew we had they tended to type um to respond um slightly slightly behind because they they thought more so we i mean i did do some little probes like that but um they you know st- See, Steve Stroke Sue um, came through, um, and then we'd get these other little things that were unsolicited, uh, you know, breaking nails and things. And um, I once um, I I made these, uh, got these sweatshirts made up, and they they were uh, they had the there was a big block of text whoa, here, and quite good. You used to get red on while you were stand red while you were standing in queues and in public transport, and it, and on this block of text it had the opening description for mud where the where you first arrived it was a narrow road between lands the description of which was narrow road between lands you are stood on the narrow road between the land and whence you came to the north and south are a pair of majestic mountains and when i and sue said i i tried that on and it said pair of majestic mountains right across my majestic mountains <laughs> and now that's that's pretty good attention to detail I mean, some guy who deliberately buys a sweatshirt size small and then reads it and then thinks, what would happen if that were a woman wore that? Or maybe he actually had a tame woman he could put it on and then see. And, oh, yeah. and, and that's actually quite good attention to detail. However, it's also betrayal and um, people didn't like it at all. And there was a very um, 
sour taste afterwards. And nowadays, uh, well, fr from then onwards, it was a case of every time you see a woman in the game, you think that you make the assumption that it's a man, even if she's sitting next to you playing. Um, it's not so, uh, so much like that nowadays, but um, back then it, it was, which was quite liberating, I think, for some women, because they got that whole um, treated as a person thing rather than treated as a, um, as a, as a woman thing. Anyway, I was wondering this this, this Sue person. Mm -hmm. I mean, was is, was she a transgendered person, no, no. or was she just no. a guy having a joke or something? It, well, the way these things happen is, I mean, the first question that Mud asked you was, "What sex do you wish to be?" Now, the reason it asked you that was because English doesn't let us have no sex. You have to have the pronouns have to match. You. Um, because otherwise, you know, Richard has dropped Richard's box on the floor. You know, so you have to have his and her and stuff. And, and so that's why we asked. We, ideally, we wouldn't have had gender in it at all. Um, but so if the first question you get asked is what gender are you going to be, then you, why wouldn't you put female? Yeah. So you do it. And, uh, and some guys do it and, uh, it's not, um, you know, they feel a bit uncomfortable or something. And other guys do think, oh, wow, this is great. Um, I mean, mud, I, we deliberately made it easy in mud to switch gender. There was things you picked them up and they switched your gender. There was a change spell where you could cast it on other people or on yourself to change gender. And sometimes you'd be playing for days and not know what gender you were, which was just how I wanted it. Um, and also by having gender, that allowed people to learn the concepts of role playing because, um, Role playing wasn't a thing back then, um, so people didn't really know what to do. And it, um, I mean, I, I did the cross for the first cross gender thing because I, cre I created a character called Polly um, originally as a parrot, um, as a test character. Um, and then when I added gender to the game, um, obviously Polly was going to be female because it's a female name. So, and then so I was playing as Polly, and they but Polly's a girl and you're a man. Yeah. So you're the one that started that. <laughs> yeah, and it was deliberately so. I deliberately did it in order to teach people to not teach to show people that you could role play. And some people also role played, not pretending to be women. Uh, that wasn't how it worked. It was just the pretending to be something that you're not. And there'd be other people who would pretend to be pirates or uh, the um, or magic users or whatever. And that, that's they 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 went in their own directions. But. Um, the the for Sue um, what happens when people what what you should do if somebody starts treating you um, as if you're the person you're pretending to be um, as soon as that's a real life thing coming in and when real life comes in then what you should say is yeah now nah, sorry you know um, the uh, yeah, I, this is just a character. You know, in real life, I'm not female, and that's what you should say, and um, that's what I say if anybody asks me um, when I'm playing female characters. Although it turns out I'm really, really cute, so they don't <laughs> believe me. <laughs> I'm adorable. Uh, yeah. Anyway, are you sure you're not <laughs> female? No. Um, last time I checked, <laughs> not. Um, so the um, what happens though is it, it when you make them. If, if if somebody says you're female in real life and you say yes, because, you you know, it, it, you're just going with the flow, you're just rolling with it. And then from then onwards, you're now betraying. You're no longer role playing um, a character in a game. You're masquerading as a real person. You're pretending that there's a so I'm, you're, you're role playing a real person who's role playing a character. And this is is where all the trouble comes from with the uh, the cross-gender play. It's when people fall in love. And we did have people fall in love with Sue. Um, I'm thinking it's, they maybe have kids, people pretending to be kids or a certain age that are... Um, you, you could, yeah, you can get that. Um, it, it, when I'm, whenever I'm playing MMOs, if somebody asks me what sex you are, uh, um, I'll say, what, you mean in the game? You can see why uh, in real life. Oh, well. I'll say something like, um, in this game, I am a um, female magic using human. In real life, I'm only one of those things. And 
so it, it sort of you know it doesn't exactly break the fourth wall but it lets them know that um or sometimes they'll say um uh are you are you familiar in real life or are you like a 50 year old uh guy and i'll say actually i'm 55 but yeah <laughs> so so sorry for creeping you out but you know that but that's like a, that, there's there's kind of an expectation back then at least of you know you're role playing for a while but once you get to know somebody on a certain level then it, ble- it bleeds over into real life right mm, was that fairly yeah. common yeah yeah um it it, it was fairly common um the, in on the u.s servers we had on CompuServe, there were whoa, divorces all sorts of things going on that I, I once i tracked a chain of i think 13 relationships you know guy going out with girl who's married to guy who's um, also seeing somebody else who's the, whose sister is um plays as her sometimes and she and, and it's great long chain of things and uh it was quite quite exciting when they all met on a on a boat in off the Isn't off the coast you've of you've had California. quite a few of these mud meets right where all the yeah yeah how big did those how big were those at the peak of the uh, 30 people something like that never got all that big because um the accessing the game it was expensive you had to have a computer you had to have a phone line you had to have spare time mm-hmm. um and you had to have the the money to pay for the phones phone calls and it um it wasn't um easy for uk players um, the same sort of applied in the US, but your phone calls were free to local numbers, which meant all the big cities could have them. Mm-hmm. Um, and we did get lots of American players on CompuServe who could happily afford $6 an hour because $6 an hour to them was worth about what six cents an hour is worth to you right now. You know, it's nothing. Um, we had lawyers, we had actors in actors from TV shows, you know, soap operas, Um there was all sorts of people huh. um, who, who played and generally quite wealthy, but not always. You know, I had school teachers, people like that. And they would be quite, quite. Um, I don't know if the, if the word chuffed is American, but they're quite, um, um, oh, I happen to know this leading actor in a soap opera <laughs> through having met him, met him in a game. So, hmm. yeah, they, they got a bit of kudos out of it. Yeah, that's but, kind of interesting. You started the whole thing to get away from that. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> class base, and then I guess only wealthy people could could play it on uh, CompuServe, right? Or this was well, after uh, the British yes. British Legends. Yeah, that was called British Legends. Was the name that was given to Mud when we put it on CompuServe, and there was one reason and one reason only for calling it British Legends. And that was I didn't have to change all the spellings. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> So like color and armor and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all those things, yeah. Um, so they they said, okay, well, rather than spend ages going through you changing all the spellings, why don't we just call it British Legends? And then people will think, you know, oh, I can read the British accent as I as I play. I can. <laughs> so yeah, Come in. it's quite a couple of questions before I want to talk about the CompuServe and how that and how that happened. But uh, I was also one of this ask about this making whiz uh, oh, yeah. system and and you said that when you got to a certain level you got some administrative yeah. privileges and i'm just thinking you know what kind of privileges are we talking about and that just seems like it would invite a lot of chaos and yeah and, um when you got to wizard level then uh, it, it, it was two hundred and four thousand eight hundred points from um well, actually smaller than that first but then i racked racked it up a bit and for most of its existence it was two hundred and four thousand eight hundred points and the reason for that um number was because they doubled up so you went 100 200 400 800 1600 and so on up to mm. 2000 and and when you got the last point um you got to be a wizard you know you are now in um you congratulations you've reached wizard type wizard mode um, and if you type wizard mode, the prompt, which had previously been an asterisk, became minus, 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 minus asterisk. So it looked like a magic wand. Cool. And and at that point, you, when you typed help, you got a whole bunch of new commands. And they were 
pretty impressive. So there was things like Thod, Finger of Death, um, does what it says on the tin. You know, Thod, Fred, Bye Bye Fred. And this is again with Permadeath. <laughs> so really, Bye Bye Fred. Um, it had a command called Crash. If you type Crash, it caused the game to crash. Um, you could move people around, move yourself around. Why would you around. want to crash the game? Just for... Why would you want to crash the game? Well, yeah. though, because you had so many powers that you could crash the game. It, um, ordinary players, regular players who weren't wizards, we call them mortals, they couldn't crash the game. If, somebody, if a mortal found a way to crash the game, I would fix it. Mm -hmm. But if a wizard found a way, so if I pick up the rain and I put it in a, a, a room that's already got the rain in it, then it causes a crash. Well, big deal. Don't do it then. If you want to crash the game, just type crash. So it was sort of there as a, um, just to show show the, what the power, and occasionally it would type crash. And the mortals thought, oh, wow, I so want to be a wizard because look at the power you can have mm. when you can crash the game just by typing crash. So, um, so it worked like that. Um, some wizards did get um, out of control. Um, when I say out of control, well, they're never in control. Um, you know, they got to, and the first thing they did was fod everybody. Well, okay, you can bring people back from there. They may have been fodded, uh, but it, we did keep backups of the database. We could bring them back, and we could also de whiz people because although they were wizards, they were also arch wizards, which was me and Roy. So the the wizards, most of them, they would hang around for a bit, and then they they'd leave uh, the game, which is kind of what we were expecting most of them would do because once you've learned who you are, once you've reached the end of your journey and you know, you've know you self-actualized in the game, I suppose, um, there's no reason to, to, to be there it, um, as a wizard. It, it, it's just a place. It's no longer um, some kind of awesome, mysterious world. It's like the real world, but not quite the same. It's now it's it's you've it, you've conceptualized it. It's part of part of your life, and it's somewhere you go to meet people that you like or you know you know, and so on. But it's not somewhere that you hang around in order to um, to progress as a person anymore, because you reach that when you reach wizard level. So some of our wizards, most of them would come in, and then they what we call them drift away. They come in less and less often and they go back to the real world because that was, you know, the, the, the aim is for, um, you, you become a better person by, well, not a better person, you become the person you are by playing mud and then so there's no reason you'd need to carry on uh, except if you occasionally wanted to come back and meet people. So um, most people... Most of the wizards drifted away. Others, though, they liked it and they'd hung around because they wanted to help the game. They wanted to help other people. They liked the people in there. Maybe their uh, their real world was even was really not as good as mud, and they preferred to be in muds, the, the land we called it. So they preferred to be there, and so they'd stay around and use their wizardly or witchly powers to. Um, monitor the game and you know make sure the mortals weren't misbehaving give them fun things to do and so on and that's what that's what they did i mean you couldn't do that nowadays um because it's not something that scales um you sort of the the equivalent would be maybe guild leaders that sort of thing um they don't have the same powers that mud wizards did but they've got the same um, authority to kick people out of the guilds and stuff so and that's all for this week's episode i hope you guys and gals enjoyed that uh, ep uh, little discussion about gender lots of uh, great stuff coming up in this interview series probably have at least one more maybe two more uh, maybe even three, but probably two more installments for the Dr. Bartle. So uh, don't worry if, you, if we haven't got to the topic you're waiting for. There's lots more to come. So stay tuned. As always, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting me in my efforts at preserving the video game history, the legacy of our favorite game. So if you haven't done it already, uh, please just go over to the Patreon site. Only takes a couple of minutes, guys. And you can sign up for whatever amount you feel comfortable with, what you think the show is worth to you. 
So thank you very much to everyone who has already done that. And if you're still waiting, don't wait. Just go do it. It'll be well worth it. All right. Uh, let's see. What about that news from the Met Cave? All right, so pretty good bit of news today. Uh, of course, it is the 4th of July. That is, uh, of course, Independence Day here in the U.S. It's a Dependence Day in Canada. Uh, I don't think it's really acknowledged in the rest of the world, but it's a really fun time to be here because uh, we have lots of fireworks shows and hot dogs and my favorite, many donuts, and of course, lots of good beers. So uh, cheers to all of my American friends. Hopefully you're having a good holiday today. Oh, uh, let's see, what else is in the news? A uh, Thamer wrote in about a game called Mother Russia Bleeds. Uh, this is by a company named Devolver. I, I believe I saw they were based in Paris, France. Uh, so I'm not sure what the connection is there with Russia. But anyway, this is a co-op, brawler, beat-em-up, Streets of Rage, Double Dragon uh, style game. Up to four players. Uh, it looks pretty interesting. It's very over the top with the, with the violence. So don't look at that trailer if that sort of thing bothers you. Um, Fragments of Silicon, uh, that's of course uh, Adam, uh, fr old friend of the show, he's got a podcast and he's got David Beatty on there who's uh, the former executive producer of the show, uh, to, of uh, Matt Chat, uh, to talk about Mega Wars. It's a really cool game. If you're, if you're really interested in these sort of early uh, MMO type experiences, uh, that's a really good one uh, to look at. Plus, of course, it's been updated for modern PCs, and it's, it's basically a, a renaissance of this Mega Wars game. So go, go listen to the interview. If you don't know what Mega Wars is, um, we'll explain everything. Uh, and then finally, the Bard's Tale 4 uh, game. Uh, that's a Kickstarter project. It's got six days left, and they're up to $1.4 million. Uh, they need to get to 1.7, though, to get Colin McComb on uh, to do one of the dungeons, and then 1.9 to get uh, Chris Avalon on to do a dungeon. I'm pretty confident they will reach those goals, but uh, again, if for whatever reason you've been on the sidelines or putting it off or whatever, uh, just don't wait too much longer because there's <laughs> less than a week left on this, and you'd feel pretty pretty dumb if you, you just forgot about the deadline. So I would just say, as soon as you watch this, go, go ahead and get over there and pledge uh, to this thing because I think you'll really uh, like what uh, they've, they've, got, uh, they've got there. <laughs> At least if you're a Bard's Tale fan. <clears throat> you know what I could use? An ale. You know what I've got right behind me? An ale. Specifically, I have a root beer. But, uh, <laughs> uh, this is not just any root beer. This is the uh, root beer that is actually an ale brewed with the, well, let's see, ale with the taste of spices. So it's called Not Your Father's Root Beer. It's got 5.9% alcohol, uh, so a little stronger than a Budweiser, but definitely not, not, uh, not crazy. Let's see, Small Town Brewery makes specialty beers that utilize. Oh, there's more. Uh, that utilize unique ingredients with an unmistakable taste of nostalgia. Small Town Brewery. Uh, I wonder if Small Town Brewery is actually a small town or part of a conglomerate. Uh, let's see, out of La Crosse, Wisconsin. So I think that's a pretty good chance that's legit. Anyway, I guess it's root beer. I don't know if it's root beer that they added some ale to, or it's just ale with a sort of root beer flavor, or fusion of some sort, I really don't know. Uh, but I'm really curious because I love root beer, and also like ale, so <laughs> maybe the two of them combined will be really cool. So let's get it open and see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of this Not Your Father's Root Beer. Here in the rather excellent drinking horn. I've been smelling it. I, it smells exactly like a root beer. Uh, just going by the smell alone, I would not even guess that this was an alcoholic beverage. It just smells uh, like a root beer. I don't smell any alcohol in this or uh, any sorts of uh, traditional ale aromas. I'm starting to get a, get a, to get a little worried. I hope I didn't accidentally uh, pour an A&W <laughs> and w into the horn. <laughs> anyway, that well, smells fine. Uh, so let's give it a taste. <clears throat> uh, that is weird. Okay, let me try this. <laughs> let me try this again. <laughs> Uh, 
You know, I'm starting to think this was not my father's root beer because he wouldn't have drank this crap. I'll try it one more time. That is just nasty. It's like a, you took a perfectly good root beer and then you poured some, uh, like, cheap rum into it maybe or some, uh, some vodka. It's just not, doesn't taste anything like an ale. Uh, you get sort of that a root beer, a very sweet sort of root beer soda, uh, like taste at first. Then you get this taste that's, I don't know, almost medicinal. I guess that's kind of an anise, maybe a really strong uh, anise herb in there. I do try to simulate some of those uh, root beer flavors, but it does taste like some kind of medicine to, to me. Not, 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 a good, not, not a good kind of medicine either. Uh, I'll give this one more taste here. It's like a banana flavor. Well, like those banana Twinkies, you know, and you like you think it's gonna be a good old Twinkie, but then it's the banana Twinkie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ugh, ugh, terrible. Uh, you know what, I'm not even gonna give this a single horn. Just no horns on this. Stay away from not your father's root beer. <laughs> Yikes. All right, so let's wrap this up with a quotation. Now, I was looking up for, uh, for quotations about gender, and uh, I found a really good one from my, one of my favorite people, my favorite writers, uh, Mark Twain. It goes something like this. What, sir, would the population of Earth be without woman? They would be scarce, sir. Almighty scarce. <laughs> See you guys next week. I don't know how many of you guys realize this, but this uh, drinking horn also doubles as a voice changing module. It works pretty well. This root beer sucks.